Here's your online weather briefing for Saturday, August 17th. I'm Donald Jones. And I'm Montra Lockwood. We continue to watch a tropical wave slowly making its way west-northwest across the central Gulf of Mexico. This wave remains highly disorganized even though the center of circulation has moved beneath some of the areas of convection. Overnight, the National Hurricane Center reduced the wave's chance of development to 40 percent, as it only has about another 48 hours over water before the storm is expected to move on shore across the western gulf. The forecast philosophy remains unchanged, as the surface low is expected to continue pushing to the west-northwest without significant development before moving on shore across northern Mexico or southern Texas. Meanwhile, in the upper levels, a trough extending across the southeastern U.S. will continue to produce numerous showers and thunderstorms across the southeastern United States over the first half of the week. By Sunday night and into Monday, the trough is expected to begin shifting to the west, bringing the wet weather to our area. Here's a look at the forecasted rainfall totals across the region through Wednesday. Parts of the Alabama and Florida coasts are expected to see over 5 inches of rain through the next several days. Combined with the rain that has already fallen over the past week, flash flooding will be possible across this area. Taking a look a little closer to home, we'll see rainfall totals generally less than an inch north of I-10 and between 1 to 2 inches from I-10 south. Keep in mind that locally higher amounts will be possible, but flooding is not expected to be a concern for our area at this time. From an impact perspective, the system will not be any cause for alarm. Winds may be a bit breezy Monday and Tuesday, with gusts up to 20 miles per hour possible. As was just mentioned, rainfall totals of generally less than an inch can be expected north of I-10, while totals of 1 to 2 inches will be possible from I-10 southward. And winds will not be strong enough to cause any significant impact to tide levels. In fact, the only real concern will be for outdoor activities scheduled for Monday through Wednesday, along or south of I-10, as conditions will likely be pretty wet. If events are weather sensitive, they may need to be postponed or moved indoors. Finally, taking a quick look way out in the Atlantic, Aaron has intensified once again overnight and has regained tropical storm status. This intensification is expected to be short-lived, though, as increasingly unfavorable conditions are expected to weaken Aaron beginning in about 24 hours, and the storm is expected to dissipate entirely by Wednesday, having posed no threat to any land masses. For additional weather information, please visit our website at weather.gov slash Lake Charles. If you have any questions or comments about the information presented here, please post them on our Facebook or Twitter sites also listed here, and we'll be glad to answer them.